Hello everyone, Dr. Victoria Skirbel here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Um, I am going to do some tarot scopes and uh, we're going to do some card readings uh, on each of the zodiac signs for the month of July. So uh, let's get started on that. I think what I'm going to do first is uh, pull a oracle card and then do a um, Celtic cross. So this will be for um, the sign of Aries. So this is a oracle card for the sign of Aries for the month of July 2021. Um, this would apply to you if you have an Aries Ascendant, an Aries Sun, or an Aries Moon. Um, the other thing about Aries is because it is the start of the Zodiac, it also gives us an archetypical picture of uh, what's in store for Aries. So we can actually apply the Aries to all of us, perhaps in a more collective manner. Now, July promises to be a very um, active month because astrologically, uh, we start with a very uh, powerful opposition between Mars and Saturn. Mars is the energy of moving forward and Saturn is the energy of stopping. And so there is a great tension um, in that opposition. That opposition is occurring on the 1st of July Mars is associated with the sign of Aries. So uh, Aries, the ruling planet of, of you Aries, Mars, is in a fire sign. It's in, in Leo, so it likes being in fire. Um, but because it's in this opposition to Saturn, you can perhaps feel as if there's something holding you back. We also have um, on the 3rd of July, we have that very same Mars making a square to Uranus. This is a first quarter crisis and action square. So there's a lot of tension and there's, uh, there's this need to sort of break free. Um, so that's true. That's true for all of us. Um, but because Aries is ruled by Mars, you may feel it, um, more, uh, acutely. And we have the water card is the first card being uh, being brought up. Of course, uh, July is a month where um, for the for most of the month the sun is in the sign of Cancer, um, so it's generally an emotional month in itself. We have corn, the corn, and lastly we have. The wild woman, the wild woman. So as I look at these cards for Aries, um, water talks to us of um, an ability to connect with your feeling and your feeling nature. And the corn card is um, is one associated with planting those things that will nurture you, planting those things that we, will nurture you. Many years ago, I did a, um, many years ago, I did a, a, a week uh, with um, three um, women um, associated with the goddess religions. This was back in 1989. And it was with Starhawk, for those of you who know who she is, Louise Satish, um, and Margot Adler, God rest her soul or goddess rest her soul, I should say. Um, and it was a week long and we did all kinds of, uh, uh, ceremony and all kinds of, uh, circles. And, and it was a transformative time in my life for sure. And sort of, uh, plopped me right on my path. Um, but there was a point where, uh, before we started what we were going to do, like, they did, uh, Louise Chatiche did the cowrie shells, which is a divination. And uh, she came up with um, the rain has to fall before the corn can grow. And that's what 
this Aries is about. The rain must fall before the corn can grow. And so we have to feel our feelings. We have to experience them. We cannot shove them down. Um, we must, in a way, become the wild woman, the woman who is breaking free from the energy of um, what is expected. Very, very Uranus in Taurus, actually, this card, if you ask me. And so, um, again, this is true of um, the Aries energy, but also true for all of us, because Aries, as the start of the zodiac, sort of gives us a sense of uh, what it is that, uh, that lies ahead for, for all of us on an archetypical level. So that is the beginning. Let's see what the cards say. I will be using for... Um, Excuse me, let me find it. For Aries, we'll be using the Wild Unknown deck. The Wild Unknown. So, so this is for you, Aries, Aries Rising, and Aries Moon. Aries is um, usually starts around the 20th, anywhere from the 20th, 21st, to sometimes... I don't know if I've seen many 20 seconds um, of, of March to uh, April, that April 20th. So it is the first sign of the zodiac. It is a fire sign. It is a cardinal fire sign. So those of you who are Aries, Aries rising um, or Aries moon. Now the difference is I find the most, um, well, the difference is that an Aries, an Aries sun is that this is who you are, right? An Aries rising is sort of how you approach the world. And an Aries moon is how you respond emotionally. So um, it's a little different for each one, but good to look at this. Okay, take a look. I'm almost done here. Excuse me. question needed to be answered so <laughs> I answered the question <laughs> this is you wonder why I'm not more um, on top of like doing things all the time like doing readings more readings and stuff it's usually because my life isn't my own <laughs> okay we have the start is the Sun of Pentacles the Sun of Pentacles so this is about planning this is about paying attention to your um, your finances. It's about uh, planting seeds and nurturing them and being patient enough to allow the seeds to grow. Now, uh, if I may so, patience is not Aries' best virtue. <laughs> so what's challenging it is the father of wands, the father of wands. And so this is the king of wands. The king of wands is used to having dominion. The king of wands is an energy that wants to go out and do and, and need something to believe in and can be, uh, although the king is not nearly as impulsive as the, as the, um, the prince or the knight of wands, they, there's still that energy. And so the challenge here is to hold back your actions um, because the time is not right. You need to make sure that your financial stuff or, your, or the stuff that grounds you, it doesn't necessarily have to be money, but it can be resources. You have to make sure that your resources are um, well established and your your need to like get into the action and get into the, the to the work of transformation is it will feel like it's pulling at you it will feel like it's pulling at you let's see what's at the root of that uh we have the daughter of pentacles interestingly enough the daughter of pentacles is at the root of that um the daughter or the or the or the page of pentacles 
is an energy that is just now learning how to manifest. Um, it's like, um, oftentimes that card is associated with learning. There's, there's, there's some learning that needs to happen. And so I feel like this is part of that. This is part of the learning, um, to, um, manifest your light. Aries is very much becoming, but what are we becoming? Um, it's generally not an energy that will put roots down. Usually we don't see the roots come in until, until Taurus. But this is this challenge of, uh, making sure your foundations are planted, your seeds are planted that, that the, the, um, that you're paying attention to that is part of a learning curve for you guys to um, go through the process and learn how to manifest instead of just being a flash in the pan. Let's see what's in the, in the, in the, okay. So we have uh, the seven of pentacles in the past. The seven of pentacles is you have done some work, but it's not quite done. Things aren't quite ready. You're not quite ready for prime time. And again, it's pentacles. So it's saying that, are you taking care of your finances? Are you taking care of your body? Perhaps it's your body that's, that's, that you're not, uh, you're not paying attention to. These things aren't necessary. These things are necessary. Let's see what's in the sky. We have the son of cups, the son of cups, uh, or the, or the knight of cups is, is an energy that is very idealistic and also very much, um, there's an idealism to it. Their heart is in the right place, but they don't always, um, sometimes they're too in love with the idea of love to notice that there's love all around them. And so, um, this in the sky of this reading says to me that you need to keep your innocence. You need to keep your idealism, um, but utilize it as a something to aspire to and not actually the reality of the situation that you're in. Um, it's an aspirational energy, not necessarily an actual energy, but it is a good energy to keep as a goal to keep, to sort of have that purity of heart as you move through your month. And in the immediate future, we have the two of swords. This is, um, this, th this card can be a stalemate. This card could be at a crossroads, but it is an energy of non-action, non-action. So as difficult as it may be, this is not July, I repeat, is not a time to act. It is a time to observe. It is a time to balance actions. Um, and in that balance, a door will open. A door of opportunity will open how it's seen from outside. Um, it may seem like you're giving up on something to the outside world, to the outside world, not necessarily true. Your domestic situation. Okay. I like this. I like this. The nine of pentacles. Non-action will bring you resources. Now that sort of goes against probably Aries like whole thing. Right. But that's what it says. Hopes and fears. Um, a new world. This always says to me, a new world, a new world, hope for a new world. And the outcome, excuse me again. Okay. I'm back. Sorry about that. And the outcome, we have the three of swords, the three of swords. Um, 
The Three of Swords is a card that generally means uh, some sort of uh, painful experience. Sometimes it's a betrayal. Sometimes it's um, um, a third person coming into a relationship and disrupting it. There's some sort of disruption. It is a mental card. It is about your mind. And so there may be something, some thought, some idea that you are married to that somebody, a third person or a third energy comes in and disrupts the energy. It's a painful thing. It's a, it's, it can be a mental anguish around it. Um, but ultimately it's purpose is to free you is to free your mind. Let's see if we can pull a major arcana. We have the three of cups right after the three of swords. So it seems as though people will come in to uh, help you to manage whatever it is that you're, you're, you're working through. And um, to know that you are not alone, that everything is connected. Everything is connected. And that's the thing with Aries, because it's the first sign, very often you feel as though you're in it on your own. You feel like you need to be a self-cleaning oven. Uh, I have, my husband is an Aries, um, and he's also has a lot of ones in his numerological chart. And one is sort of the number of Aries, right? Um, but very often he, um, tries to solve all his problems on his own and he doesn't necessarily ask for help and, and for people who have uh, prominent Aries. Now I am not an Aries. I do not have an Aries moon. I am not an Aries ascendant, but I have Mars in the first house. Um, and I, my first house is very full. So if you're, if you happen to have a first house, that's very full. And you would know that if you know your chart, not everybody knows their chart. I realize that. This can also be an energy um, that you're working with. So a really full first house, the, the Aries house, we can also be feel, feeling this. And you can also have the tendency to want to do it all on your own. Um, you do not have to face the world alone. You don't. There are many people who are there to help you. You just have to look around and open to the possibility of not having to do it all by yourself. And then we get the victory card. So this month for you, Aries, Aries rising and Aries moon is going to be a month where, uh, patience is a virtue. And I believe the waiting is going to perhaps feel like you waited too long at some point because something that you were thinking about doesn't happen. Um, but ultimately on the other side of that is a victory on the other side of that patience is a virtue that will be, um, rewarded. Patience is a virtue that will be rewarded. The big T-square that's happening in July between Saturn, Uranus, and Mars in an Aries chart activates your fifth house, your 11th house, and your second house. A lot of creativity, a lot of energy, but a lot of emotional energy. Um, And so this is a time that you cannot run away from. You have to face what you have to face. Um, that's what I want. That's the message for Aries. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, like and subscribe. And um, I will be back again next month for a uh, terrascope on Aries. 
Much love.